what's most interesting about what I teach is that you get to choose. Yeah. You know, and, and you can choose to, to focus on the negative and you can choose to focus on the positive and absolutely right. You, you know, yeah. and a lot of people will, will be going for their goals and next thing you know, they'll mess a moment up and they'll beat themselves. I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid. Right. Why did I do that? Right. Like, well, why are you wasting that moment? Hello and welcome to Self Talk. I'm Rachel Astarte. John Davis has been a professional fight director and stuntman, an artistic director, a sword fighting comedian, and is now a motivational speaker, author, and coach. John, welcome to Self Talk. Well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here to talk with you, Rachel. I'm really, after reading your profile, I'm pretty excited to talk to you as well. You know, we have we have so many things to to say, and so. Um, Let's start at the beginning. So how did you get into all of what you do? I mean, there's so much, but but let's let's take it uh, from the beginning. What got it, you inspired it, to this? It was, it was a it was a an interesting journey. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be the kid with the stick in the hand, the pretending it was a sword. And that manifested into me starting to go to Renaissance festivals. Yes. Wh- where I met two of the top fight directors in the country. Uh, and they saw a lot of talent in me as an actor and a combatant and ended up giving me their training for free because they, they liked what I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was going for my black belt in Taekwondo and I was really fit and healthy. And back in those days I had long Fabio hair oh, wow. <laughs> as, opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to this Telly Savala stuff I got going on now. <laughs> and, um, what happened was, um, a buddy of mine said, hey, can you help me unload my van? I said, sure. So I went out to his house to help him unload his van. He was a professional potter, and mm-hmm. his van was filled with 80-pound boxes of clay. Oh, I climbed up into his van, and I picked up the first box, the very first box, and I twisted the turn to set it outside of the van, and my spine broke in two. What? My spine broke in two, and I collapsed. It was paralyzed. And... The, uh, they took me to the doctor. Doctor says, Mr. Davis, you have a condition known as spina bifida occulta. And I promptly said, gesundheit. <laughs> I had no, <laughs> idea, no idea what that was. Uh, basically, three of my vertebrae right at my, right at my pelvis never formed properly at birth. Oh. And when I twisted that day, I literally broke the top part of my spine off and pinched off my spinal column. Oh my um, he told me that day, he says, uh, you may never walk again. And even if you do, you definitely will never have a physical career. Mm. And uh, while I was lying in the hospital bed, somebody gave me a book called the Tao Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee. Mm. And in that book, that book is in a very interesting book because it's a book, it's his philosophy towards martial arts rather, as opposed to a martial arts style. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wrote it when he was in traction in the hospital and had just been told he'd never do martial arts again. Wow. <laughs> and he did every movie he, that we know him for after that. Huh. So so I read that book and I got really into a couple of things, staying very present mm-hmm. and managing my fear and also um, uh, being very flexible, mentally flexible. Right. And in the process of that, I, I decided not to take the doctor's belief and take my own belief, my own creation. And I started just exercising my neck muscles mm-hmm. and then my upper back muscles. And then over the course of several weeks, I eventually got past my hips so my, I actually really reflects my hips at a, at a year. By the time a year came back around, I was back to where I would consider being a normal person, but yeah. not back to my rock hard masculine self like I was before. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> a year and six months, I was all the way back to where I was physically. Mm-hmm. And I climbed up on top of a tower, a three story tower and jumped off into a fall pad. And then I went on to do over 4000 live comedy store fighting shunt shows all over the world. I worked in Hollywood with movie stars and on films. Uh, I climbed Mount Sinai and Machu Picchu, and I've been swam the blue rooms of Iceland. I've, I've been to 30 countries around the globe. Uh, I ended up going to the front lines of Iraq and Afghanistan on six USO tours. So it was like I lived the life of an action hero after that, all by the way of just of doing that. Well, long story short, during that time, I created a show called Hack and Slash, which was a comedy sword fighting show. Mm-hmm. And it, it traveled all over the country, all the Renaissance festivals. And um, on in se- September of 2001, just before 9-11, the Pentagon asked me to do USO tours. And wow. I went off and did those tours. But I found that when I was on stage performing, um, 
I was enjoying the time off the stage more than on the stage mm. because what was happening off the stage was I was taking all the things that I had learned on how to achieve things and how that you're the creator of your experience. And I started helping people achieve that in their life. Mm. So then I said, how do I, how do I combine this new passion of helping people, you know, break past their, their limiting beliefs and their barriers and also do whips and nunchucks and comedy and cool stuff. Right. 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 <laughs> so, so I created the corporate action hero. And now what I do is I go into corporations all over the world and I literally awaken the, the interaction here in their teams and I get them moving forward. And uh, the, the, one of the, the main things I do, and I think you would find this interesting as a psychotherapist is the, is the, the main speech I do ends with me dra dragging the most timid person I can find in my audience on yeah. stage. And in under five minutes, they learn to crack a whip and take targets out of my hand. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So I have to pause and ask you, how do you manage to work with the most timid person in the room when they're like, no, 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 I don't want anything to do. I don't want any attention. How do you do it? Well, the number one thing that we all deal with is our fears. Right. right? And as Buddha, Buddha said, the secret to enlightenment is the eradication of fear. Mm -hmm. And so when, if you're leading someone through anything, you have to realize that it's their experience that you're, that you're leading. So you have to manage their fears. So I bring that person to the stage, but as they walk on the stage, the first thing I say to them is I say, thank you so much for helping me. Mm. So now what I've done is I've, if I, I've given them a positive you know, thank you, a gratitude. And then I also have put them in purpose of helping. Right. By, by giving them that section. Right. Then I turn to the audience and I say, isn't she a rock star? And they go, woo, they cheer for it. Right? <laughs> What's her biggest fear? Her biggest fear is being in front of those people, right? Right. And the, the where that fear is based is she wants their love. She wants their you know, their acceptance. Right. And what I just did was I just took that fear off the table. Right, right. right. Like, what if I make a mistake? Baby, you know, I got to work with these people, you know? <laughs> right, Ex exactly. exactly. Like, exactly. It's all fine and good for him, but lunchroom, you know? <laughs> right, right. right. And, but what happens over the course of the next five minutes uh, is is very fascinating because I never talk about whips ever. Okay. I talk about fishing. We're just going to go fishing. I'm going to teach you how to cast a fishing rod. So mm -hmm. I'm keeping her in the mindset of a calm, serene day on the lake fishing, mm -hmm. right? And even when I say, okay, let me get you a fishing rod and I pull out a bull whip. Now new fear gets introduced into her. Right. Head, right. So before she can even think about that and say, we're just using this as a fishing rod because it's the same action. So I'm right. already negating the fear that she has. Right. right. Because when you pull out a bullwhip, people think pain, danger. Some pe people think frisky Friday night, but we don't want to go there. Right. We want them to stay with the, with yes. this clean intent. Then she's still holding a whip in her hand. So I want to mitigate it even further. So I have half the audience do a fish face. They're doing this. <laughs> right. right? right. Now, she, now she's laughing mm -hmm. in this moment that could be very stressful for her. Sure. And then I say, choose the fish you want to catch and cast your fishing rod mm -hmm. and she kapoom and, and, it, and the whip cracks because it's the same motion. You're right. So I said, catch another fish, kapoom, catch another fish. Boom. So she cracks like four or five times. Then I reach in, into my bag and I pull out a target and what the targets are they're they're pretzel rods mm -hmm. because they make the perfect target. Right. So, so I pull it out and I hold it out. Now she has a new fear, her new fear. She's going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. So I look her in the eye, and, and this is the part that I think you, you'll really appreciate. I look her in the eye and say, did you hear it crack? And she says, yeah. yeah. I said, so you already know how to crack a whip. Mm -hmm. yeah. You already know how to crack a whip. And mm -hmm. I, do, I actually do the hand gesture and all because the hand gesture, is, it's that wiping action that takes that. Yeah. yeah. And what I did was I, I basically shift her time frame from learning the skills and knowledge of the skill. Mm -hmm. In that second, just by letting her know, look, I get her to acknowledge that she did it. And then I get her to forget the fact that she has to keep learning, mm -hmm. put her in the space of I am. I know it now. I know how to crack a whip. I said, right. so you already know how to crack a whip. You already know how to crack a whip. I promise you're not going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I say to her. Right? I promise you're not going to hurt me Yeah, because that's her fear. Her fear is hurting right. me. And right. she says, okay. And she, once she lets it go. I said, all I want you to do is look right here on the target and just cast your fishing rod. Mm -hmm. And they go kapow. And they, they take it right out of my hand every time. It's <laughs> amazing. Now that, that timid person has just had a life changing experience. Yeah. Yeah. Life changing because they are in front of a thousand people sometimes. 
And they've just taken a target out of my hand with a bullwhip, which is a cool thing to do. Yeah. Sure, think about it, right? And that audience has gone crazy cheering for them. Mm-hmm. Right. It's And the, the people in the audience who know her as timid are like, oh, my God, I can't believe she did it. So they have their having experience, too. To sure. me, it's, it's the greatest thing that I do on stage is watching yeah. that transformation right there in front of me. Yeah. And I, I hear a lot of NLP, a lot of neurolinguistic programming in there, too, even with the hand gesture. You know, mm-hmm. the brain is constantly processing and and trying to put things in their place. And when you're able to talk someone through, and I love the wiping the slate, it makes a difference. It does. Right? Yeah, and, because, and, you know, this, this this gesture, a lot of people um, don't realize it's a natural gesture we all do. Yeah. Somebody says, somebody says, uh, gosh, you look great today. Go stop. <laughs> you know, stop. <laughs> right. Right. You love that, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It, so it's it's built into our psyche already right. that that is that means clean the slate, mm-hmm. so, and then with with her specifically in that moment I go I get her to anchor with the idea of she heard a crack and mm-hmm. quite honestly in neurolinguistics that that plosive sound of the whip cracking is a magnificent anchor mm-hmm. magnificent anchor so I say did you hear it crack so now she's anchored to that and then I go that. then I start the positive reinforcement with the head nods I go so you mm-hmm. already know how to make it crack. Right. And even overlaying the we're casting a fishing line as opposed to this is a weapon that you're right. about to use. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's exactly right. I mean, exactly. you could go about it a different way and have her completely shut down. Right. You know, oh, no, t- like, t- it's t- all t- on t- you. T- you know? Totally. And I'll tell you an interesting an interesting fact is that um, I no longer choose men for that part of the show uh-huh. because their testosterone kicks in when you put a whip in their hand. Sure. Oh, and yeah. when their testosterone kicks in, they get dangerous. Mm-hmm. But a woman will get up there and she will still stay very focused and she'll stay very mm-hmm. clean and she'll go, okay, mm-hmm. I'm getting the job done. Yeah. Right? And, and I, I, the, the only, the couple of times where it came close to me, get, get me getting hit was men. Wow. And wow. Every, every other time was a woman and they always hit it perfectly every time. Mm-hmm. So as you do these uh, amazing trainings, what is your end goal? for them once they go back to work on Monday? My end goal is what I call it awakening their inner action hero. Mm-hmm. And we all have this limiting belief in self-talk behind, as, you, as your podcast is about <laughs> that holds us back, right? Mm-hmm. The subconscious mind has two jobs. And the two jobs in my mind are, are one, storing your present moment memories so you can create this underlying subconscious belief. The mm-hmm. other one is to show you what you're focused on. Mm-hmm. And so like, for instance, I'm a Jeep guy who has Jeeps and I love Jeeps. So when I drive down the road, I see every Jeep on the road. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And and so when when I you can get focused negatively, you can get focused positively. You can get focused timidly, or you can get focused dynamically. Mm-hmm. And and if you can start stacking present moment memories here in your subconscious belief, you're now changing the subconscious belief. Mm-hmm. But because because you're focused on something positive here, it's also showing it to you. So now you're creating this treadmill of positive and success. And so right. it's like, that's awesome. The other thing that I see is that most people, when, when one of the things I really want to express to people is that the small present moment successes are, are the thing that create the successful outcome. Mm-hmm. You know, they're never going to be, they're never going to get to their outcome in the future because we never get to the future. The future is just right. a place where That's we right. set goals. I, I say that to my patients all the time. It doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's just a place where we set goals for our next present moment, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And all we got to do is in this moment, stay stay true to what we're, our goals and our and our positive outcome and just stack present moments while that thing's coming closer to us. That's we don't get right. to it. It comes to us. So Right. We're already in the future for when we started the podcast. Exactly. You know, and here we exactly. are in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so excited I'm, when I leave an audience, I love the fact that some people get more out of it than others. You know, some people really get into a very deep level mm-hmm. and it's very, it's a very interesting thing because after I finish the show, or after I step off the stage, people all want to come and shake my hand or see the whips or whatever. And there's always like, you know, a few people who just stand off to the side mm-hmm. and wait for everybody else to leave, to walk up and speak quietly to me. Mm. because they want to come and say, and they say, I got a deeper meaning out of this. And they wanted to ask whether, is there spirituality in this? Or <laughs> they'll get, you know, get, and there's huge spirituality in what I do. Everything sure. I do is based in my own spirituality. Yeah. Tell, tell me more about that. Well, I am, I'm a very fortunate man. My mother 
<laughs> I had the greatest mother in the world. She, uh, she had her master's degree in liturgy at the Catholic Church and raised us as Catholics. And to, to tell you what that, what that manifested in her life, she became head of liturgical doctrine at her church, which meant when the priest wanted to uh, do a sermon, he had to pass it by my mom. Wow. <laughs> right. But when I turned 18, mom said to me, uh, John, spirituality is a personal journey and you need to find your own belief. Mm-hmm. And she says, I hope you come back to Catholicism, but you know, you need to find out what you believe because that's, so I went off and I did all the studies. I mean, I, I will travel through India. I, I, you know, I've read the, the Bhagavad Gita, the Vakanamrut, the, the Bible, the, the Quran, you know, the Torah, you know, all of, I, all the studies I can find the Baha'i faith. Mm-hmm. And then I also got into Wayne Dyer and, and then all the, all the new agers too. Mm-hmm. And I just found such universal truth yeah. in all of it. Yeah. And, and you, know, you know, Buddha says, what you think you become, you create your world. Uh, Krishna said, you're the culmination of your thought. Uh, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Mm-hmm. So what we think about our, our, ourselves and our experience is creative. And now noetic science has been proven that right. when you think, you can actually measure the thought waves. Mm-hmm. And when you focus the thought waves, they stop at the point you focus on. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't pass that spot. So we literally are, are are creating with our th- our very thought yes. and our and our belief. Yeah, and, and that's that's physics too. Yeah, I can't I can't seem to do a podcast without talking about quantum physics because I'm a geek. But I, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you and me together, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I but but what you're saying is is um, is very simple, and and I love that science and spirituality are are coming together because it only just proves that as you said it's it's connected and and um and ultimately all of the um you know animosity among different beliefs and faiths i love what ram das said which is we're all just walking each other home right you know ultimately we came from the same place we're going back to the same place and it constantly is in flux and it's beautiful and all that so what we're doing in this life um, is, you know, whatever journey, whatever we need to be learning in this life and what you're, what you're teaching and what you're sharing is how important it is to realize your own strength and your own power. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, there's that saying that God made man in his image, not the other way around. You know what I mean? Right, right. (laughs) And, and, And that to me is fascinating too, because being made in God's image, everything we see is pure energy. Yes, our, exactly. Our, our hand and our eyes. So the only thing that we are is our consciousness. Yeah. And so yeah. everything we see is the image. That's why we're in it. Right. And here's the thing that, that recently I got very interested in is um, in the Pali language, which was the language of Buddha. Um, the, the, the number one Buddha quote that everyone always quotes is life is suffering. Right. But the word in Pali is dukkha. And dukkha does not translate to English well. Because mm-hmm. the reason it doesn't translate to English well is because it's a bigger concept. And when they translate it to English, it has three very distinct meanings. The first one is pain or suffering. Mm-hmm. The second one is habitual response. Yeah. And, the, and the third thing is um, belief from experience. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the actual definition of dukkha is life is pain and suffering because of habitual response because of our subconscious mind. Right. And and so they've taken this as pain and suffering and it gets very esoteric in their their studies of that phrase. But mm-hmm. when you look at what he's actually saying, it's it's that cycle we talked that that treadmill I talked about earlier. Right. It's that exact same thing that he's saying. Right. Exactly. And and um, it's it's really important to understand that some of these languages that are being translated into English, English just doesn't have the capacity to understand the, those many the different meanings. And so that idea of being stuck in this cycle in samsara, if you, you know, the, the being able to not see your own divinity. And I get back to the Bible and, you know, the kingdom of God is within you. There's, there's, it's all there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So yes, we suffer, but suffering is not yeah it's not that negative necessarily fully negative thing that that uh we think of it means that we feel we we are 
you know, we are not in a non-dual state right, right, when right. we're human beings. <clears throat> One of the things that I find with clients all the time is they, they have a, there's a, there's a deep seated belief out there that struggle equals growth. Mm. And I'm not a believer in that. And, and the, the argument they always say is, well, you know, when the butterfly is in the cocoon, it's the struggle against the cocoon that makes their wings strong enough to break free. Mm-hmm. And my response is, how do you know? <laughs> because all you, for all you know, that, that butterflies in there saying, hey, it's cool to pick stuff off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it because yeah. what you're saying is a subjective experience. Right. I know, I know people who go to the gym and work out and put themselves in utter pain and agony and love every minute of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's what you do, right? And right. I, th- I think it's a subjective choice. And I think what, 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 what's most interesting about what I teach is that you get to choose. Yeah. You know, and, and you can choose to, to focus on the negative and you can choose to focus on the positive and absolutely right. You, you know, yeah. and a lot of people will, will be going for their goals and next thing you know, they'll mess a moment up and they'll beat themselves. I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid. Right. Why did I do that? Right. I'm like, well, why are you wasting that moment? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's what, I, like, what, what I do in those moments, I go, Oh, well, that's silly. <laughs> and I yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess I'm human after all. Right. And, right. <laughs> you know, and, um, and, and then you, you know, if you, if you're using even, mistakes correctly you're adding to your experience and you're growing and you're getting stronger you know right you know know, we talked about we talked about this treadmill and and that concept that the subconscious mind is showing you what you're focused on and a lot of people will will be focused on on a goal and something will come up that'll seem contrary to what they're trying to achieve right but Mm -hmm. if that subconscious mind thing is correct and you're focused on a goal a positive outcome of a goal and that thing came up, that's because your subconscious mind is saying, this is what needs to be cleared away. Right. Exactly. But a lot of people will get that thing come up and say, well, I'm done. Yeah. And they'll change their belief. The, and, whole, the whole premise of, of psychotherapy, right? You, you know, you go to a therapist because something isn't working. Something's wrong with you. And mm-hmm. I always come from the stance, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're being called to tinker with the machine so that you can, you know, the, the perfect machine. There is no such thing as a problem in that way. They're just, you know, I say it's like a light on the dashboard of your car saying change the oil. It's like when you're having a problem, when you're having an issue, these are the things that are, you're being beautifully invited to shift what you need to shift right. in order to get to where you need to go. <laughs> and and it is it, it is your personal choice. And what, what I find interesting is in the Bible, it says, whatever you're asking, God's name is granted. But mm-hmm. Moses, when he climbed the mountain, found out that God's name was I am. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're putting after I am is what you're creating. Correct. So I took certain words out of my vocabulary for the longest time. Yep. Wanting, needing, hoping, and trying were gone mm. because they're inactive present moment words. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted only to have very, I, I am creating, I am enjoying, I am building, I am, you know, I am getting healthy. I am, you know, yeah. I'm creating this experience. Wanting, needing, hoping, and trying just creates more wanting, needing, hoping, and trying. You know? right. so, uh, in the right. words, of, in the words of Yoda, mm, do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> exactly, beautifully <laughs> said. Right, right, right. And <laughs> and deliver. Uh, <laughs> well, thank, you. thank you. So I want to ask you something about uh, I, on your website. You refer to what you call the five Fs. Yes. What what are they? The five Fs are the process by which I hack the fight or flight response to get out of my own way. Okay. Uh, fearlessly focus with faith, follow through with flexibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, when you're dealing with fear, the first thing you'd have to realize is that fear, all fear really is, is negatively focused on certainty. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you're focused positively, you wouldn't be afraid. Right? Negatively, so, negatively focused. Uncertainty. Uncertainty. I think it's important to repeat that. That's what okay. fear and, is. And, and, to, get, and to, to define that slightly further. It's an emotional reaction to some future event that may or may not happen with you focused on a negative outcome. Correct. And right. that that's the key. Is it's not rooted in your present moment. And, the well, you know, actors on Broadway are trained that if they forget all their lines in front of those thousands of people, they're literally trained to exhale and relax all their muscles. Mm-hmm. And it shuts off the fear response and turns mm-hmm. their cognitive thinking brain back on and all their lines rush back into their head. Mm-hmm. Because... When when people get afraid, afraid they they feel like they can't breathe, right? And it's not that they can't breathe; it's just that their body's in a primal survival mode, and it's storing air so they can run further and faster. Exactly. Yep. 
And so if they can go, ah, relax, it'll turn that off. So we've got fearless, but you can also have the tool of focus by, by choosing the goal and staying ultimately focused. When negative things come up, just keep refocusing back to your goal. So fearlessly focus. Mm-hmm. The middle one is faith, belief, confidence that you can do it. Mm-hmm. You have to literally give yourself permission to number one, be fallible, but number two, to believe it. You have to give yourself permission to believe it. Next thing is, is follow through, taking the small present moment actions. And what's interesting is when you take small present moment actions, you make them successful, they start to stack and trust is developed by results over time. Mm -hmm. And so your faith will build the more you stack these moments. Right. That's That's right. And the last of the five F's is flexibility. When something does come up, realize that it came up to be addressed, not, not to be hindering your progress. Right. Right. That's beautiful. And so, um, I mean, and that's a, and that's a really wonderful way to approach anything, Yeah. you know, yeah. anything in your life, whether it's work or personal relationships or even your own spiritual journey. Right. Right. You well, know? In, in, in Sufism, they say God is on one side of a veil and we're on the other side of the veil. And our life is the struggle against the veil and the veil mm-hmm. is our fear. Mm-hmm. So if we can, and sometimes the, the, the fear envelops us and sometimes it is, it's not as, as bright, but um, I like to look at it a little differently. I like to pretend, I like to not pretend, but I like to look at it as if I'm standing in a room full of love because the Bible says God is love and all this energy would be the positives. Mm-hmm. And I'm standing here and my hand is on a knob of a, of a fear fog machine. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I can crank it all the way up and not see the room or I can crank it way down and see it all. Beautiful. But I have to remember that it's my hand on the knob. Right. Right. That's really, that's a very powerful image. Yeah. Um, so how can listeners find you? I have, I have your, your website is corporateactionhero.com. Yes. And if you go there, you'll find LinkedIn and Twitter and, and Facebook. They're all, okay. all the links are there. You don't have to find, you just go there. You'll find it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I also have the inner action hero podcast. And for my, my friends who are into spirituality, I also have the Spirit Cafe podcast, which is uh, the uh, study of spirituality without, without guilt or dogma. Um, and for your audience, I really want to make sure I give them a gift today. And I, it's a gift. It's completely free. I don't even take your email address. Um, and it is corporateactionhero.com slash gift is the link. It's, you're not going to find it on my website. You actually have to use the link. Okay. And what it is, it's the 5F workbook that will take you through your own process of using the 5Fs. And uh, on that page, you're also going to find supporting video to help you know, sh- expand on what we've talked about today and uh, really help you achieve your goals. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. So that's at corporateactionhero.com slash gift, gift. And, you, yep. and it's not on the website. So you have to, I, I will make sure that in the show notes, we have that just for, just for our listeners. Thank you so much for that gift. Oh, you're and I'm glad we had a chance to talk about it before you, before you presented the gift. That's that's beautiful. Uh, John Davis, thank you so much for being on Self Talk. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh...